Hi guys, welcome to art class. Today our learning target is I can draw a macaw by using shapes and lines I know, creating texture using lines, using a variety of green, and coloring carefully. There are a lot of different types of macaws, but the largest ones have a wingspan of about four feet. So what I want you to do is hold out your arms, so from fingertip to fingertip is how we measure wingspan. So yours is probably around five feet long. So picture that a macaw is only one foot shorter than that. Really big, huh? Macaws live for about 30 to 60 years. The smaller types of macaws will live the 30 years, and the larger they are, the longer they'll live in wild. They are extremely intelligent birds. They can identify colors, they can understand the concept of bigger versus smaller, and they can learn new words and phrases every day. Before we start drawing, make sure you have a piece of paper and something to draw with. So the first thing we're gonna do, a few fingers in from the edge of the paper, and bit far down from the top, probably like a finger down from the top. We're going to draw the macaw's beak. So you're going to start by drawing a big curve line. Then, and you know what, I'm going to get even hook in further. Then you're going to draw from the point down here a little curve line that ends up facing the same way as the top one. Now you're gonna connect them. Oh, and make it a little curve. That's the top of the macaw's beak. Now we're gonna draw the bottom, but we're gonna kind of make it look like he's smiling. So we're gonna draw a letter U right under here. So we're gonna start where the beak connects to the top. Draw a letter U. Then we're gonna connect that with another letter U. So from right here, I'm gonna draw another one and make it stop at the bottom. Good job. Okay, now we can kind of shade that part in. All right, the next thing we need to draw is the sear. The sear is where the bird's nostrils are. So we're gonna draw a rainbow. And then you're gonna draw a little nostril inside. All right, now we're gonna draw the eye. So right out across from the sear, maybe three fingers away, I'm gonna draw a circle. You can make it as big or small as you want. And then I'm gonna leave a little shine in there, like the light is shining off of it and fill it in. You can pause the video anytime if you need to catch up. And if you want to draw the eye a different way, you're totally welcome to. Okay, the next thing we need to do is draw the head into the back. So this is a big sweeping motion we're going to do. We're going to go up around to the top of the paper and down to the corner of the paper, all the way down here. So ready? I'm going to go up, and you can practice a few times before if you want. Over and down to the edge of the paper. Good job. And see how I left it kind of curved? To make it really look like a macaw, we need to have this space between the eye and the beak be white with kind of these stripes around it. So right from the sear, I'm going to draw a big loop around the eye, down, and up to the bottom beak. Now this is the fun part. You kind of get to imagine this part. We're gonna draw stripes that start from the beak and go out toward the eye, and they kind of always go around the eye. So we're drawing these parallel or walking beside lines that are all curved to look like they're around the eye. And you gotta leave some that are small to balance it all out. And if you need extra time, pause the video. The next thing we're gonna do is we need to draw the wing. So the wing is just a candy cane hook. We start it around here, and we candy cane hook all the way off the body. So maybe like a finger or two down, you're gonna start candy cane hook, and notice how it's right straight down from my big white space. Candy cane hook, candy cane hook, and down and around. 
Next thing we need to do, we're going to draw the belly of our macaw. You're going to start it from right under the beak, right under the bird's chin, kind of. We're going to curve in slightly and then go out to follow the line of our, our wing. Then we're going to swing it back underneath and we're going to curve, 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 curve until it meets up and stops underneath the wing. So we have the main frame of our bird built. Now we need to go in and just like our learning target says, add the details of feathers by use, making lines. We also have to add feet. So to make our feathers, we're gonna start down here in the wing. So I'm gonna go curve line, kind of like a popsicle stick, back up. Curve line like a popsicle stick, back up. Maybe one more, but this one's gonna be a little shorter. Curve line like a popsicle stick, up. And then how I like to draw feathers is draw these kind of uneven little U's. And I don't like to make them all the same exact size. So go ahead and fill in the rest of your wing with these uneven little U shapes. The next thing we need to do is these long feathers are gonna have a little bit more of a texture than we're giving them right now. So they're gonna have these kind of these little angled lines in them. Going in, in, in. Angled lines, in, 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 in. Do that on all three of them. They're pointing down and in. Right, the last thing we need to do feather-wise to make a texture like we made here and here is we're going to, um, on the top of the bird's head, we're going to make a few feather ruffles because sometimes when birds are feeling like upset or they're feeling happy, these feathers will come up to show that feeling. So what I'm going to do is kind of make some squiggly lines or some curved lines. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. And wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Great job, guys. If you want to add more texture to your bird, go ahead in and add those little wiggles or U's to your bird. Next thing we need to do is the feet. So typically, they have two toes together that we can see. So right under here, we're going to draw a curve down the hill. Make a little U at the bottom. And then we're gonna walk in the side line, parallel line, back to the back to the body. You're gonna do the same thing right beside it. Maybe make this one a little bit bigger. Curve line down the hill. Make a little U. And parallel line back. Now what you can do to make it really look like a macaw foot, the little claws. Just a little V. And then these kind of have a texture too, their feet. Um, we bird owners like to call them raptor toes. <laughs> so you can make kind of little lines all through the feet. Just these tiny little dashed lines will help give it a texture. Remember, a texture is the way we represent how something looks in a piece of art. All right. Last thing we need to do on the drawing end of things is we need to create a branch that the bird is sitting on. So what we're gonna do is behind our bird, starting a little bit farther up from our perch, we're, or from our foot, we're gonna draw a line going straight to the side. And then we're gonna do a parallel line, but we're gonna start it down here. Parallel line, parallel line. And there's your bird's branch. Let's check in on our learning target. Looks like we can cross the first two off because we drew using shapes and lines we know and we created texture of feathers using lines. Good job. Now it looks like it's time to work on using a variety of greens for our background and coloring carefully. Let's talk about where macaws live so that we can use that information in our drawings. Macaws live in the rainforest. 
They nest holes in trees and eat nuts, leaves, berries, and seeds. Their strong beak allows them to open nuts and seeds that other animals might have trouble doing. So in the background, I think we should definitely add leaves to show that they live in the canopy. And I think it would be great if we added some fruit or some nuts so that we can show that we understand and we know what they eat. I'm going to show you how to use lots of different greens to create depth in your background to make it look real with the leaves that you draw. How you use that information to inform your drawing is totally up to you. So I want to show you how to make a leaf in the background so that you're using a lot of greens and it looks real. So I'm going to use my dark green and my light green. I'm also going to use yellow and blue. Why do you think I would use yellow and blue as well as green? If you're guessing, it's because yellow and blue make green. You're right. They're really easy to blend together. We're gonna make a kind of big waxy leaf that are kind of long. So how we do that is we're gonna use a curve line down and don't be afraid to make your bird overlap the leaf, which means that your bird is going over top of the leaf. The leaf is behind it. Remember, that's part of atmospheric perspective and making something look real. And then I'm gonna leave a little point and I'm gonna do a curve line the opposite way, kind of like a football. So first, when you are coloring something in, you always wanna use the middle color. That's what we call the mid-tone. So out of these, we've got our super light, medium, medium, dark. So I'm gonna start with my lighter green because it's, it's in the middle. So I'm gonna lightly color in my whole leaf. Next, I'm gonna go in and make the shadows. So for a leaf, I wanna make sure that we can see the veins. So I'm gonna use my dark green. And I'm gonna go through and make a curve line in the middle. Then I'm gonna make the, the veins of the leaf branching out. The other thing I wanna do is I wanna pick a side of the leaf to make the shadow part, or the side that's not in, in the sunlight. So maybe I'll pick this side, and I'm gonna go in and lightly color it in with some of my darker green. Wow, it's already making it start to pop. The next thing I'm gonna use this dark blue for, I know you're probably like, what are we doing with blue, Miss Collie? You're gonna go in and go over your veins on your leaf with that dark blue. And that will allow you to make some of these shadows extra popping. So I'm gonna go back in with my dark green right along these, the leaf veins, cause it kinda indents on the leaf. It goes down a little bit. If you have a chance today, go grab a leaf and feel it, how textury it is, how bumpy it is. So see how I'm adding green, just along dark green along the edges of those veins? Awesome. Now what you need to do is take your yellow. So your light is on the opposite side of your shadow. So up here, where my shadow is not, I'm gonna fill in with some yellow. And maybe I'm gonna pick a few places in here to put some yellow too. And then if you notice that it's kind of chunky or the colors aren't blending, all you need to do is take your middle color, your mid-tone, and go back in over it to kind of smooth things out. So now that you're done with your background, we need to work on coloring your macaw. There are tons of different types of macaws, just like there's a lot of different types of dogs. The one you're probably most familiar with is the Scarlet Macaw. Um, that one was typically used in the posters for the rainforest and um, in movies and that kind of thing. Uh, but there are a variety of other ones with different colors on them. Here's a picture with the different types of macaws on it. Feel free to pick whichever one you want and pause the video to be able to get a closer look at them. Remember, color carefully and have fun. If you have any questions, please feel free to email me or comment under the instructions. Happy art making!